In the last video, we looked at this example of a series where when you allow the terms to alternate between positive and negative, you so we saw that it converged. But when the terms uh, were all made positive by, say, taking an absolute value of the individuals, uh, then it diverged. So this was an example of what's called a conditionally convergent series. All right, in this video, we're going to look at a couple of examples uh, of classifying whether a series converges conditionally or absolutely. And for now, we're just going to use uh, some numerical estimates to try to get a handle on this. Uh, but in the next video, we'll actually get to a theorem. But before we do the examples, I think it's important to notice uh, that you can actually uh, use uh, the series with absolute values to tell you something about the series without absolute values. Because the series with absolute values, uh, well, if it converges, then we can conclude that the sum without absolute values converges as well. All right, so if you know that this term with only positive things that we're adding up converges, then the sum with the positive and negative terms must converge. Uh, and the reason for that is we can make a nice little comparison. We can compare, well, first of all, a n has got to be less than or equal to the absolute value of a n. And it's got to be greater than or equal to negative the absolute value of a n. And if we were to uh, add absolute value of a n to each side, we'd have 0 is less than or equal to a n plus the absolute value of a n is less than or equal to the absolute value of 2a. Well, if the sum of a n converges, well, then doubling the terms isn't going to make it diverge either. So the sum of 2 absolute value of a n converges. And notice that these terms are positive. And so by our comparison test, if you have uh, terms that are smaller than the terms in another sequence series that's convergent, we know that the middle one must converge as well. So by comparison, the sum of uh, a n plus absolute value of a n converges. Well, if that converges, then the individual pieces must converge. And therefore, the sum of a n converges. OK? So to summarize, what we just noticed is that if we can show that the terms converge when they're all positive, then we can conclude that the terms will also converge when they alternate back and forth. So we can write that out as follows. If the sum of an converges, then the sum of an without absolute values converges. Now notice the following statement is not true. This is not a true statement. I'll write it down uh, and let's fix that. That should be a sum. If the sum of an converges, then we cannot conclude that the sum of the absolute value of an converges. Okay, we just saw an example of that. If we scroll back up, notice when we looked at the sum of 1 over n, uh, without absolute values, it converged, but with absolute values, it diverged. Uh, and so knowing that it converges without the absolute values is not enough information to conclude that it's going to diverge, uh, converge with the absolute values. All right, so this is not true, but at the very least, we can know that if the sum with positive terms converges, then the sum with alternating terms is going to converge as well. So let's do an example. 
consider, consider the sum n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n plus 1 all over how about let's do uh, let's just do n cubed now that is not a series that we have worked with yet right we've never seen this series but we could write down its terms it would be let's see when n is 1 we'd have uh, negative 1 to the 2 so it's going to be a positive 1 on top all over 1 then the next one's going to be negative it'll be 1 over 2 cubed plus 1 over 3 cubed and 1 over 4 cubed and so on the question is does this converge and this would be very difficult because it's not a function where the integral test applies uh, comparison tests are going to be difficult it's not a p-series uh, because of that negative one in the numerator it's not geometric it's not telescoping the nth term test is inconclusive so basically we'd be out of luck here but this uh, observation we just made comes to the rescue because we know that the sum of 1 over n cubed converges. It's a p-series with p greater than uh, 1. p is equal to 3, which is obviously greater than 1. So by the statement that we just proved, therefore, the sum and notice that's the absolute value of negative 1 to the n plus 1 all over n cubed. So that's the term, uh, the sequence, with absolute values of each of the terms. And as we just proved, if that converges, then the sum without the absolute values must converge as well. OK? So that's a pretty powerful result. One of the ways to deal with alternating series is to ignore the alternating part. And if we can show that that thing converges, well, then we've got our answer. All right, let's do one more. Let's look at the series from n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 to the n plus 1 over 2 to the n. Does it converge? Uh, well, hmm. uh, one thing I forgot to mention in the last video before we, before we do that, I uh, notice this series converged with or without absolute values, and we, so we can say that that converges, and we can say it converges absolutely. All right, so we, we can be more specific than just saying that it converges. We can say that uh, it converges with or without absolute values. It converges absolutely. All right. On to our next example. Does this diverge, converge conditionally, or converge absolutely? Well, huh. We have that negative one to the n plus one, but let's let's think about a simpler problem. Let's think about the sum of one over two to the n. Well, notice that is just a geometric series. And R, the ratio of consecutive terms, is going to be 1 half. So it must converge. And that is the same as the original series that we were interested in, just where you've taken absolute values. Right? We made everything positive. Well, again, by our, our results, uh, which is called Theorem 1 in Chapter 10.5, Four. Since the sum of a n converges with absolute values, the sum of a n must also converge. And so there we go. We can conclude that it converges. And since both converge, we would say that the answer is it converges absolutely. Okay?
Now, some of you may have noticed that there's another way to do this problem. So let me just quickly mention that. Uh, we also could recognize that negative 1 to the n plus 1 over 2 to the n is just negative 1 to the n times negative 1 over 2 to the n. And so we can write that as negative 1 times negative 1 half to the n, which means that our original series actually can be written as a geometric series. with r equals negative one-half, which its absolute value is, of course, still less than one, and so we can conclude that that must converge. So in this case, uh, the theorem was not necessary. We could have re recognized that it was a geometric series and determined that it converged, but uh, that's not always going to be possible, and so having this theorem as uh, one of the tools in your toolbox is a useful thing. All right. So uh, this theorem tells us uh, is useful when the series converges absolutely. It does not tell us about conditional convergence. So in the next video, we're going to look at a new test called the alternating series test, which can help, which can help us deal with those sorts of cases.